I saw a video that cost $36,000 to give birth in California. Guess how much it costs here in South Korea? Let me tell you what was included first. We went in at 10 a.m. for a scheduled induction the day before my due date. At 11 a.m., they started my Pitocin drip. I got an epidural around noon and the baby was born at 3 p.m. After the delivery, they topped up my epidural. There was a little bit of tearing, so they stitched me up. I got a nutrition drip and a catheter for the night. We stayed two nights in a private room with its own bathroom. My husband was able to stay with me and they provided three meals a day for myself. So we checked out after two nights. The total bill was 2,325,461 Korean won. National health insurance covered 1,691,083. Our final bill was 634,300 Korean won. The Korean government provides 1 million won for the course of your pregnancy and I had 419,400 left of it that I was able to put towards our bill. We ended up paying 208,200 Korean won out of pocket is roughly $163. I saw a video that living in New York costs around $2,000 to $5,000 a month. Guess how much it costs to live in Seoul, South Korea. We rent a three-bedroom apartment for $800,000 Korean won a month. We pay thirty dollars to 50000 Korean won a month for electricity. Our water bill generally floats around 27000 Korean won. Our gas bill for the house runs us about 50000 Korean won a month. We have two unlimited data plans that comes out to 75000 Korean won. We pay for our internet annually. It ends up being 37000 Korean won a month. Our car insurance for our two cars ends up being 116305 Korean won a month. And transportation and fuel costs us about 120000 We rent an office for work, which costs us 400000 Korean won a month. Our groceries are about 520000 Korean won. And lastly, we don't eat out much because we have two kids, but we do deliver in a lot. And that adds up to 630000 Korean won. So our monthly budget to live in Seoul as a family with two kids is 2826490 Korean won a month. With today's exchange rate, that's 2157 US dollars. According to the Daycare Council of New York, daycare for a toddler costs roughly $341 a week, which is $16,380 a year. Guess how much it costs in our mega city, Seoul, South Korea. First, let me tell you how long he goes for and what's included. We send him from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., but it's actually open from 7 a.m. till about 9 p.m. Anything after 6 p.m. is an added cost because it includes another meal. There is an added cost for two English classes, one PE class, and one activity day a month. He's given two snacks and one meal a day, and daycare also sends him home with loads of thematic toys every week including books, basketball and basketball hoop, and more. The monthly cost for daycare is 364,000 Korean won a month. The added English classes, sports class, and activity day for the month costs 59500 a month. The total amounts to 423500 Korean won a month, for which the Korean government pays the 364000 Korean won. So we only end up paying 59500 Korean won a month, $46. If you're 25 in the U.S., guess how old you are in South Korea? The most popular way to count age in Korea is called Senanai, which means counting age, more famously known as Korean age. In this system, babies are one at birth, and another year is added every year on January 1st. So a baby born on December 31st would be two years old by January 1st, even though they're actually only one day old. This is the age that is used in daily society. The multiple age determination system has posed problems for things like mandatory military service and COVID-19 vaccinations based on age. There are plans to abolish the Korean age system and stick to the international system starting in 2023. So if your birthday has passed, your Korean age is your age plus one. If your birthday has not passed, your Korean age is your age plus two. So if you're 25 in America, you could be 26 or 27 in Korea. In 2022, the U.S. passport ranks the seventh most powerful passport in the world, tied with Belgium, Norway, New Zealand, and Switzerland, with access to 168 countries. Guess how the South Korean passport ranks? Let me give a couple examples of traveling on a U.S. versus South Korean passport. A Tanzanian visa for a U.S. passport holder costs $100, while for a South Korean it costs $50. U.S. citizens need to apply for a Vietnamese visa prior to travel, but a South Korean passport doesn't need a visa for a stay of up to 14 days. Iran requires U.S. passport holders to apply for a tourist visa. The process takes up to eight weeks and the traveler must be accompanied by a government-approved guide at all times. A South Korean passport is able to get a visa on arrival. The Henley Passport Index calculates the total passport score as the number of destinations a passport can enter without a visa. The South Korean passport has hassle-free entry to 192 countries, along with Singapore, making it the second most powerful passport in the world. But the most powerful passport in the world is a Japanese passport that has access to 193 countries. The 100 U.S dollar bill has 15 security features. Guess how many the largest Korean bill has? The official currency of South Korea is called Hehan Minguk Won. In English, it's the Korean Republic Won. There are currently four paper bills that are in circulation in South
South Korea. The 1,000 won, 5,000 won, 10,000 won, and 50,000 won. There are also four coins in circulation, 10 won, 50 won, 100 won, and 500 won. The largest bill is 50,000. It was released in 2009 because of rapid economic growth and inflation. The note features Shin Saim Dang, a prominent 16th century artist, calligrapher, and mother of Korean scholar Yul Gok, who is on the 5,000 won. It is the first Korean banknote that features a portrait of a woman. Koreans carry an average of 53,000 won in cash. South Korea is moving towards a cashless society, with cash accounting for only 17% of all transactions. The US dollar exchange rate of 50,000 won is roughly $37.65 with today's exchange rate, which is the lowest point the Korean won's been against the US dollar since 2009. Security features on the 50,000 bill include color shifting ink, novel numbering, micro lettering, and more, adding up to a total of 16 security features. If your name is said John Smith in America, guess how it's said in Korea? Adults in Korea rarely call each other by their names. Being able to use someone's first name either means you're very close to them or have extreme superiority. Instead, Koreans address each other by their relationship. For families and extended families, there are words in the language for each type of relation, such as older sister or brother, sister-in-law, younger brother-in-law, and so on. In work settings, people refer to each other by their last name and job title or solely by their job title, such as team lead, manager, or boss. Parents are often referred to by the first names of their kid, followed by the word mom or dad, like John's mom or John's dad. Or people might not use the kid's name at all and just call you baby mom or baby dad. When it comes to strangers, you can get away with addressing them with some version of excuse me. Traditionally, children take on their father's last name, but Korean women do not take on their husband's surname after marriage. In Korean names, the family name comes first and is followed by the given name. So if your name is John Smith, in Korea, you would be called Smith John. The most popular flavored milk in America is chocolate. Guess what it is in South Korea? The word for milk in Korean is uyu. 75% of Koreans have lactose intolerance, and dairy foods aren't a part of the traditional diet. In the 1960s, the Korean government created a campaign to expand milk consumption in the country. The president at the time visited West Germany and discovered that children were drinking lots of milk in school and thought this would be good to implement in Korea as well. In 1981, a school milk initiative was launched as an effort aimed at improving the health of young people and developing the dairy industry. Korea's most popular milk flavor was produced in 1974. The bottle's design is said to be inspired by traditional Korean jars. The milk got its flavor because the government wanted to encourage Korean citizens to drink more milk, but consumers did not like the taste of regular milk. At the time it was introduced, the fruit was expensive and considered a luxury. Korea's most popular flavored milk is panana uyu. I saw in a video that in New York City you can buy a parking spot for $350,000 or you can rent one monthly for $675. Guess how much it is here in Seoul, South Korea. First, let me describe the crazy parking situation we have here in Seoul. Everyone is double parked and it's not illegal. This creates a problem, getting your parked car out. There are three solutions that Koreans have come up with to solve this problem. Number one, everyone puts their phone number on their dashboard so that if your car has blocked someone, the phone number can be called and the owner of the car can move it to get the blocked car out. Number two, at apartment complexes, people will horizontally double park vertically parked cars in, but leave their car in neutral. So if a car needs to get out, the horizontal car in neutral can be pushed out of the way. Number three, they have parking elevators everywhere. But to get one of these spots, you either have to have it in your contract rental agreement or you have to pay. You can apply for street parking, which is 120,000 Korean won every three months, 40,000 Korean won a month, but the waiting list is three years long. Or you can pay the regular price at a parking garage, which is generally 200,000 Korean won a month, 153 US dollars.